Hello and welcome to another Outlaws of Thunder Junction Draft. I'm Paul Chion and we are currently sitting at Diamond 4. We had a really, really nice run, a couple of back-to-back -back trophies with um, a nice control deck and kind of the dream Golgari self mill deck. So we're going to try to keep that going here and uh, maybe we can go three in a row. What about three in a row? How does that sound? Well, let's try this. Let's enter this queue. Now, if you've been enjoying this content and wanted to support the channel in another way, I did launch a Patreon channel. The link to the Patreon is in the description below. With the Patreon, you get access to the Discord channel and uh, also access to early videos. And I also do make a special video just for the Patreon once a month. Shout out to all the current patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Really do appreciate it as it allows me to continue making this content. All right. Green rare? Oh my gosh, no way! <laughs> That's a back-to-back -back drafts. First pick, first pack, Bristlebud Farmer? What? <laughs> I'll take it. Look. Bristlebud Farmer is a card that's just fantastic in any green deck, so we don't have to be the self-mill deck for this thing to be good. Obviously, you'd like to have a few more permanents uh, just to get the extra value, but a 4-mana 5-5 Trampler that makes 2 food is good enough. Uh, other things to consider. Treasure Treasure is just an okay 2-mana creature. Take for a Ride has a lot of upside, especially if you can commit a crime and then use this at instant speed to steal their creature after they attack and then block. So that's really nice. Gold Rush is a decent combat trick. Savage Smash is also pretty decent, but let's go ahead and first pick the Bristlebud Farmer. You always want to first pick a green rare because green is also just one of the best colors. All right, moving on to this pack. What do we have? Great Train Heist is a really, really interesting um, trick. Uh, if you're really aggressive, it lets you attack twice and get first strike. Ideally, you want to use this for six mana to get both of the spree effects. There's Abrupt Decay, which is a decent combat trick, but I think in this format, I do prefer Consuming Ashes to the Abrupt Decay. There's also Explosive Derailment. Uh, Eartha Joe is also really powerful, but I don't think I want to go Eartha... I don't want to go Bristlebud Farmer into Eartha Joe. So I think it's really between the red cards or the black cards here. What do I like? I do really like Servant of the Stinger, but I also like Consuming Ashes. I'm going to take the Consuming Ashes and I'm going to take it over the Derailment because of the fact... First of all, I think green-black is a better color combination. But also because I do like Unconditional Removal in the set because you have to deal with idiots like this. Like me. The kind of person that opens Bristlebud Farmer, Bristle Farmer in back-to-back -back draft. So let's go ahead and take the Consuming Ashes here and move on to this pack. Wow, this is a red-heavy pack, but none of the red cards are especially good other than the Cunning Coyote. But to follow up the Consuming Ashes pick, I'm happy enough just taking the Vault Plunderer. Hopefully we can end up in green, but I do love Vault Plunderer, so not too bad here to go Consuming Ashes into the Vault Plunderer. And wow, this is an incredible, incredible pack. Journey to Nowhere, Prairie Dog are awesome, awesome two-mana card, uh, white creatures, or white cards rather. Jolene is also really strong. Um... When you attack with one or more creatures of power 4 or greater, create a treasure, and then you can sack treasures to ping things, which is really nice. And then there's also Beast Bond Outcaster. If you control a creature of power 4 or greater, draw a card. So given what we have so far, and I don't really want to abandon the Bristlebutt Farmer right away, I think I'm going to take the Beast Bond Outcaster, recognizing that these white cards might be a little bit better. I think the Prairie Dog is probably better than Journey to Nowhere. This card is just incredible. But... Um, because I want to try to stay green if possible, I'm going to do this. But yeah, white is really good and Jolene is also really good. That's another journey to nowhere. Jeez. All right. Well, this is an instance where I will take the journey to nowhere. I'm sending a bunch of crazy signals, but I'm not going to take Drover Grizzly. In this instance, I think the Drover Grizzly is enough worse that I'm going to take the, Drover, uh, the journey to nowhere. It's a great splash card as well. So I'm going to take it here. We could end up green-white if black is overdrafted um, and just kind of take things one pick at a time. Taking a look at this pack, goodness, uh, people are all over the place here. This is a late scorching shot. Fantastic, fantastic removal spell. There's also a nimble brigand, which is a really, really good creature. <sighs> this is tough. 
This is tough, but given that I have green and I'm kind of interested in being green and I do have a journey to nowhere, I'm going to just take the desert here and pass the brigand and the scorching shot. I, I don't know what colors I need to be here, but let's just keep going here one pick at a time. We saw how good Stubborn Burrow Fiend was in the last draft, so I'm happy enough to take it here. Take for a ride can be pretty interesting, like I said before. If you can commit a murder, excuse me, commit a crime at instant speed, take for a ride can be pretty nice. Take the fall is an okay trick, but let's take the Burrow Fiend. This is just a premium. This is premium. A premium two mana uncommon. And wow, what a pack here. All right, things are coming together nicely here. I am curious though, throw from the saddle versus consuming ashes. What's better? I think they're both definitely better than the Free Strider Commando. I do have a mount. Hmm. But Green Black has less mounts. I'm going to take the Consuming Ashes. Look, I'm just going to continue prioritizing the unconditional removal spells here. So I'll take the Consuming Ashes. And I guess we're just going to run it back here. Black, green. Maybe Splash White for Journey to Nowhere. I mean, it worked last time. Although we're not getting any of the self-mill cards this time around. But I think that's still fine. Reach for the Sky is not really the type of combat trick that I love. Unless I'm like white, green, or red, green, and very aggressive. But, you know, in a pinch, I can play it. We are getting heavier here on four mana cards. We have the Bristlebud Farmer and Double Consuming Ashes. But, um... This format's not super fast. I'm going to be happy to take Free Strider Commando here. So things are going pretty nicely here. Could use some more twos. Um, I, lo I love Stubborn Burrow Fiend. In Black Green, you care a little bit about some number of self mill in a lot of instances. And uh, if that's the case, then certainly the uh, two mana 2-2 two -two Life Linker is also something that I would like to have in a two mana slot. And then the card that I like the most, outside of, of course, Stubborn Burrow Fiend, is the... Um, the bandit, the two mana one one that taps for any color. That would obviously be awesome here, given that we have Bristlebutt Farmer, a bunch of fours, and a card that we're looking to splash. Here I'll take a steer clear in case somehow we backdoor into a white green mount strategy. But I'll put this here on the side. I'll take the ambush gigapede, but I would hate to play this, so I'm just gonna remove this instantly. But hey, I mean, this is just eight cards that I'm reasonably happy playing here with a Creosote Heath. So solid start here. Solid start. Again, it's still early in the draft or early in the format where people are honestly just taking whatever. And so it's just really hard to figure out what your lane's supposed to be because people are waffling. They don't know what archetypes are good. I don't necessarily know what archetypes are good. So it's, it's, it's a lot harder to read signals, I will say. Um... We saw that late Scorching Shot. We didn't see any blue cards. Uh, we saw some white cards. Uh, it's... So we'll see. We'll see. Green does seem to be a place we want to be, though. All right. Taking a look at this pack. We have a couple of interesting twos. Blood Hustler is really nice if you can commit a lot of crime. We're okay. We have a Desert, Journey to Nowhere, and Consuming Ashes. Uh, but I love Outcaster Greenblade. We're already looking to splash Journey to Nowhere. This gives us flexibility to splash all kinds of other bombs. So it's just kind of the perfect card here for us. Mystical Tether would also be an interesting card to add for a splash. But I'd rather have the Greenblade here. And uh, see if I can take uh, Deserts a little more aggressively. Throw from the Saddle is also a nice pick. This is just a good pack in general. Prickly Pear and Irascible Wolverine also good in red. But I'm going to take the Greenblade here. I think this card is great. And see where things go from here. All right. What do we have in this pack? There's an Intimidation campaign, but if I'm already splashing white, I don't think I really care about splashing blue for this. There is a Treasure Dredger. It's a two-drop that allows me to make a treasure every turn, which does help. Um, it costs me life, but it does help me splash. But I kind of just like infinite two-for-ones, honestly, so I'm just going to take another Vault Plunderer. I'm, I am just a sucker for these effects, so let's just look. Outcaster, Greenblade, Vault Plunderers, they all just get me a ton of value here. But feels like we're getting cut a little bit in this pack. Maybe the packs are just bad. 
There's an Eartha Joe here. There's really nothing in green that I like in this pack. There's nothing in black that I like. The Boneyard Desecrator is a card that you want in your sacrifice decks, but not necessarily here. So I think I'm just going to take Forlorn Flats. I mean, we have a Desert Payoff card already, and we have Journey to Nowhere. So I think this is a good opportunity to take the Journey, uh, the Forlorn Flats and uh, set, us our, set ourselves up nicely for a, a few Deserts. Now that we have basically three deserts, it does also make cards like the Cactarantula a nice top-end threat to play in our deck. So don't mind that. What on earth is this card? Crime and Punishment. This card is just okay. This card is just okay. Oh, this card is awesome. Roxanne is awesome. I mean, there's also an Outcaster Greenblade and a Desert Stew, but I think this card's a bomb. Five mana, four, three. When Roxanne, Starfall, Savant enters the battlefield or attacks, make a Meteorite. So this is, the floor is a 5 mana, 4, 3 Meteorite that taps for 2 mana. And then when it attacks, you do it again. I mean, I gotta take this card. I wanted to take the Green Blade, but I'm gonna take this and figure out my mana fixing and uh, draft like a 4 or 5 color desert deck. This looks exciting. What does this do? The owner of target spell, non-land permanent or card in a or card in a graveyard puts it on the top or bottom on their... Okay, I'm not going to play this card. How many Eartha Joes did we pass, by the way? This is another pack that just has another zero green, black, or white cards. I will take this Oasis Gardener as a... In case my mana fixing ends up being terrible, I will put it in my deck. But I'm kind of hoping that I don't put it in my deck. Moving on here, we have access to uh, Restless Lawbringer. We do have some creatures to throw away, but I don't think this is necessarily splash worthy. We have some decent removal already. So I'm just going to take Spinewoods Paladin as just another nice large creature to play in my deck. And now what do we have? Oh, all right. I think we're going to have enough playables here. Don't need the Arid Archway, particularly if we're looking to play four colors. Uh, the Commando is a consideration, but Bristling Backward Backwoods seems awesome. Just gives me another desert to go with this rock sand that I want to splash anyways. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, and now Treasure Dredger getting this 8th pick is awesome because now we've introduced a 4th color. So this is absolutely a 2-mana card that I want in my deck. So things are looking very, very nice here for us. Now, I don't think I want to play this blue desert. It is nice with the green blade, but I think I'm just going to take a 2-drop here. We are lacking in 2-mana cards. So I'll take the Desperate Bloodseeker here just to give, uh, give us... Uh, th uh, two drop number three out of the out of our deck. So we're black green, splashing white, splashing red. Don't want a second copy of the Gigapede. I guess I'll take a take up the shield. Highly unlikely to play it though. I don't know why I took the high noon. All right, so just getting no other playables here. So let's see, Oasis Gardener. My <laughs> given how bad that pack was. I'm starting to look at some of the sideboard cards that might have to make it back into the main. All right, what do we have? We are black, green based, splash white, and red. Can't play the Fibble Thip. Don't want to splash Lazav, although I will say some Lazav is a fantastic card. Um, don't really want to take this Desperate Bloodseeker. We do have a lot of desert, so I think... Picking up the first copy of the Cactarantula is actually not bad. So I'll take that. This could be a Dance of the Tumbleweeds deck as well. But in no world am I going to be first picking this card probably. So let's go ahead and take that. And I'm going to put this in the 5 mana slot. We have 4 deserts. So I think it's really likely that we'll be able to do this on turn 5. And what do we have in this pack? Okay, uh... I'm not the biggest fan of Betrayal at the Vault. It's really, really expensive. We already we have three removal spells right now. And we're trying to splash to Roxanne. So I believe I'm just gonna take this desert here as well. Well, you know what? Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm I'm in I'm in the market for another good removal spell. We have two white lands. Yeah, you know what? i and we were lacking playables. I'm gonna actually take this mystical tether. Just to have another unconditional removal spell for our deck. And then now I'm going to take this uh, Lassoed by the Law. Okay. So now we're definitely playing white. Lots of white even. But we now have five unconditional removal spells. Very, very happy about that. 
Uh, I just feel like we needed to shore that up. And uh, yeah, this is the deck so far. Now, like a lot of different deserts can make it into our deck just because we're so many colors, right? Any combination of black, red, white, or green, like of those four, as long as it's not a blue desert, it's a desert that we're going to play. Like this red, white one, for example. But let's take a look at what else is in this pack. There is another removal spell, but at this point, I don't think we need it. There is a Badlands Revival, and I am a huge fan of this card, so I'm going to take it here. We don't have that much self-mill, but I think we have enough. And honestly, this card is just fine. Like, if you just play Magic and things trade, this is just going to get something back. And we do have a Desperate Bloodseeker and a Stubborn Burrow Fiend. So I do think it's worth taking over Mystical Tether number two or this Red White Land. I just think this card is extremely powerful. I really love this card. And now, to go with the Badlands Revival, now we can happily take the Patient Naturalist. I don't want to play the Baron on the Splash. It's a decent card, but I'd rather just take the Naturalist just to have another way to find mana and just make sure that our deck is very smooth. Now I will slam the Desert Stew as just another really, really good removal spell for our Triple Desert deck with the uh, Outcaster Greenblade. I do think it's going to be better than the Conduit Pylon, so let's take that. So now, I mean, all of a sudden, we have really great removal. We have bombs, so liking where this is at so far. Tumbleweed Rising. Is this a card that I want in my deck? I don't think I want Reach for the Sky. Certainly not Splashing Wrangler of the Damned. I don't think this is an Arid Archway deck, so yeah, let's take the Tumbleweed Rising as a spec. I've never played with this card before, so we'll see how it ends up playing out. I do like Raucous Entertainer, and we can use another two, so certainly going to take that over Make Your Own Luck. People are taking Deserts pretty highly, as you can tell. And here is, yeah, I don't mind taking Dan Dance of the Tumbleweeds uh, here, I don't think. I don't need a blue-white desert. So yeah, let's take the Dance of the Tumbleweeds to ramp us into some, some goodies. And also, it just acts as a way to get us to five, gets us mana fixing, etc., etc. Here, I'll take Ankle Biter. And this is 23 cards. I'm pretty happy with this mix of cards. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 creatures, 6 removal spells, a ramp spell. Yeah, I'm liking this. Skullduggery is a decent combat trick. Again, I don't want to splash... Let me read this again. Whenever one or more tokens enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one token. How many tokens do I make? Roxanne, Bristlebud Farmer. Not enough, probably. I'll take the... Um, I don't think I'm playing very... I'll take the Silver Deputy. I don't know what my mana is going to look like right now. But it's unlikely that I play it. I just like this current mix of cards that I have right now. But we'll see. Yeah. No, I, I really like this mix that I have right now. The only card I'm unsure of is Dance of the Tumbleweeds. I do think the card's decent, though. But let's cut it here for now. Actually, I feel like I feel like it's probably a necessary evil. Like, you want the first copy of something like that. And the nice thing about Dance of the Tumbleweeds, not only does it get me a desert, which is nice for the Cat Tarantula, um, but in the late game, it also just turns into a creature as well. We're four colors, so you want at least one effect like this. I mean, we do have uh, an Outcaster Greenblade as well, which is pretty nice, but... Let's do this and figure out our mana situation. Figure out our colors and see where things go. All right, so we're predominantly green. So we definitely want to have lots of green sources, at least like probably seven forests. We just have so many green cards. Shave down to one planes because we have what? Three white sources plus Dance of the Tumbleweeds. That's four. And then... Um, the Outcaster Greenblade, that gives us five white sources for three white cards. Not to mention the fact that the Treasure Dredger can also uh, uh, get us white mana. So I think that's good. Uh, six, seven, and then one mountain makes sense as well. It's nice to be able to get untapped red. 
And maybe we can cut a black source. Seven, eight, 15. So this is 18 mana sources. We honestly probably just shouldn't have been black. But yeah, let's just go to something like this. And uh, try it out. Try it out. This, we're a little bit light on black. Six black sources, but we don't have that many black cards. We literally have seven black cards. This is fine to play at, uh, in the late game. So I believe this is okay. Um, once, I mean, honestly, we should probably have ended up being like a white green deck, right? That's probably where we should have should have been. Now, is Tumbleweed Rising good here? I just because of its situational nature, I just don't like it very much. So I don't think I'm gonna play it. But let me know what do you think about um, Tumbleweed Rising in general? Because you can't really play it until like. No, it does not seem very good in this deck. I'm just not going to play it. Let's go. All right. Four color. Four colors. Is this deck good? We'll find out. I like my opponent's name. The Raffle Chicken. All right. What is this? How is this hand? Looks pretty sweet to me. Don't have a white source here for the tether, but we have mana fixing. We can get there, I believe. I believe. I believe if you believe. All right. Bristling back woods. Forlorn flats. All right. Ooh, see? I told you. All you got to do is believe. I think I'm going to play the... Well, I guess it kind of depends on what they play, but... Cunning Coyote, I see. I guess I'm kind of just interested in drawing, seeing what I draw here. And I'm just going to play this out. Look, it, it was still just like a 2-mana 3-3, three, three, right? So, happy enough with that. Although, now we just have too much mana. Ooh, a combat trick. Oh, explosive derailment? Sure. I mean, I do like the late game of my deck in general, but we'll see. Uh, let me see my mana situation. Yeah, I can use a double black for sure. So we'll do this. But yeah, we have eight lands. We do have a fair number of two-for-one type cards, so hopefully we can find some. Eartha Joe is going to get killed. With this uh, mystical tether. And uh, now we're on nine lands. Okay. Come on. One of my good cards. I'll even take a Cactorantula. Or a Tumbleweed card. Oh, geez. Laughing Jasper Flint. Uh, yeah, that card's ridiculous. All right, let's get a desert. Don't need green. I guess we'll get the black white. All right. This card is there's just so many ridiculous rares in this set. And they got Vault Plunderer into Consuming Ashes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's so ridiculous. It's okay. This is, you know, best of one, it, it happens. Everybody, everybody has good cards in this format. It is a thing that happens, so. Oh wait, I should have played my land. I'm, I'm so silly. I'm a silly goose. Clearly, that's like the first time I've played Dance of the Tumbleweeds in my deck. How do you ever beat this card? Oh my gosh! It draws you so many cards! What is la what is this? How are you supposed to beat Laughing Jasper Flint? They get to play an Ankle Biter too? 
Oh, they had a cons another consuming ashes. Okay. All right, all right, all right. You know what? That's fine. At least it was fast. It was quick and painless. I just wanted to showcase some of the other rares that people can play in this format. That was one of them. Let's just do a quick... Let's just double check. Let's just double check and make sure we're not missing something here. Like, are we lacking big things? We have three, four big things to play. Free Strider Commando also counts as a big thing. This can also be a big thing. We have some removal. We have a decent curve. We have the revival. No, I, I, I like the setup. I think. All right, let's let's keep it going. My opponents just have me uh, questioning everything here. All right, we are on the play and certainly keeping this. Turn two treasure dredger into. There's going to be a lot of plotting here. Let's just put it that way. Although, do I actually want to make a treasure here or attack? Probably make a treasure? I don't know. Or it's, or it's going to die. I mean, if they have the removal spell, they should just kill it, right? Yep, okay. Well, in that case, I am going to just play Vault, Vault Plunderer. And then next turn, we're just going to plot the Freestyle Commando. I, free Strider Commando. I keep saying Freestyle for some reason. They don't have any artifacts, so I'm not too concerned right now. Like somehow they're going to need to be able to make an artifact and cast a second spell which I think is pretty unlikely right now. So I'd rather just try and add to the board here if I can. Roxanne is super nice, but of course we need to find red mana. Okay, so they're going to double spell here. Okay. All right. They're, they're doing things. Ooh, that's really nice. All right, so let's play the Commando. Then let's play the Outcaster. Draw a card, untap land. Okay, and then we found a Desert's Dew, which we can uh, use whenever. It is, it is only minus two, minus two. I do have the Creosote Heath that I can play next turn to give it minus, to give minus three, minus three. But we put a five, five and a three, three that draws a card into play. And then we also have the option to kill the Newt if we really want. My only problem with the Newt with regards to this set, I wish they had just like an equipment that gives flying or an aura that gives flying. Just so that you can at least have some kind of a dream you can live in limited with the newt. But they just don't. I mean, I imagine they're going to play a second spell here, right? Uh, do I want to kill this Razzle Dazzler with the Desert Stew? Yeah. I think I could I could see a world where this gets a little bit out of hand. They discarded Phantom Interference. Razzle Dazzler is unblockable.
All right. Oh, what a draw. Um, definitely attack with this. Definitely attack with this. Let's keep the uh, Vault Plunderer back. See what they do. Only because I'm kind of afraid of getting hit by the Newt. Yeah, that's a trade I'm okay with making. So, in order to not get blown out by the Newt... Kind of just the reasoning here is I'm just gonna um, like have two creatures so if they have one removal spell I can still block with the Vault Plunderer. Wow, all that thinking and you just did nothing. All right. Seize the secrets, okay. I mean, they're at five. It's going to be really tough for them to win this one. But we shall see. No, I, I shouldn't say that. It's going to... I'm just... Them in a position where we have a 5-5 five five and a 5-5 five five Trampler in play, like drawing two cards, obviously isn't ideal. You want to be able to use your mana to... Slow down what I have in play, right? All right. A pass from the opponent. They have two mana available. I'm just going to do the obvious attack here. <laughs> okay. They're just like, you know what? I can't deal with these five fives. That is the one thing I noticed. When you're red... Like, your best removal spell is Explosive Derailment. But when you play against green, there's a couple of five toughness creatures. And uh, the your, your red removal just isn't very good at killing the green creatures. So I feel like it might... That might not match up so well, right? Like, you can run into Cactarantula. Or you can run into the, um, the Free Strider, right? That you plot and it becomes a 5-5. Five -five and it's just really, really tough to get off the battlefield. So... Update is available. Restart, okay? We will be disabling new matches in 10 minutes, okay? I will restart after this game, okay? I can finish this game in 10 minutes. Let's go. Really just want one land. This hand is amazing if I can just... Not amazing, but it's a good functional hand if I just draw one stinking land, okay? We didn't draw land. I am sad. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Oh, well. Well, you know what? All the good luck that we had... We're going to mill two lands now. Oh, we... Oh, excellent. Excellent. Of course, I, I know that it doesn't matter, but it's just a good feeling uh, knowing that we have at least a better chance of drawing a land next turn. And hitting a Spinewoods Paladin is nice with the Badlands Revival. The Ankle Biter is nice though because it does buy us some time if our opponent does have like an aggressive or just... What is going... Man, no... Come, come on, deck. Just one land. I have two, two three mana cards that allows me to find lands. I just need one. Like, and I'm... Like, my opponent just kept a completely irresponsible hand here and we're gonna lose did i keep an irresponsible hand too maybe all 
Okay, you know what? You know what? I should have restarted Arena. That's what it is. I should have restarted Arena. I'm going to draw a desert next turn. What on earth is in your hand? Oh my gosh. Well, at least we drew a two draw. This is okay. I need to turn on untapped again. So what are what are my chances of finding a land here now? I have 15 out of 26. It's like a 60 something percent chance. Does the creature get flashed in? I don't remember. No, right? Okay. So their hand is just like all removal. There is the land. I will pay the patient naturalist because it's very likely to hit us a land here. Milled the bristlebud farmer, unfortunately. But... We have the Badlands Revival to get it back. I mean, they just have to have a way to kill this ankle biter, right? What is happening? They stole my patient naturalist? <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Um, I can't kill this because it has Ward 3. Alright, I'm going to play Vault Plunderer. Just to try to find mana. I'm just going to die to this Spinewood Armadillo. I can't kill it. Oh, God, I had so much removal. This is kind of brutal. All right. Uh... <laughs> what can I return into play? There's a Spinewood's Paladin I can put into play. There's the 5-5. Five five. They have two cards in hand. It's got a ward 3. What do I want to put into play? I just feel like I want to put into play... Yeah, let's do this. I just... I'm, my plan is to block this turn. And if I get blown out, I get blown out. I just have so much action in my hand. So let's do it. Oh my gosh, it died. All right. All right, all right, all right. Oh, okay. Okay. I was excited for like a second. So we can block here. Don't have any white mana. Okay. Consuming ashes on Rictus Robber to surveil seems pretty good. So I'm going to do that. Okay. They hit a voracious varmint. Wow. This is a lot. This is a lot that we have to fight through. Oh, it's a four drop. My bad. Okay. Uh, so that's a white source, which is really nice for future turns. I'm not in a condition... Uh, hold on. I'm at 7 life. I can just play a 3-3. Three, three. It does kind of block everything, and then use Deserts do on this when they attack. Yeah, okay. I 
I need them to whiff. Like, for one turn. Savage smash. Well, I'm glad I kept this up. They should have targeted their armadillo. Wow, that was very good for me. I mean, we are running out of action. We are definitely running out of action. Oh, these removal spells don't do anything because of the stupid varmint, huh? Ankle biter all the way. All right, surveil two. Roxanne. All right, so we're gonna lassoed and then pay three, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Wow, are we going to come back here? That would be amazing. I mean, it feels like it, right? This deals two damage to any target? Okay. Holy cow. Yeah, I think what won us the game was what, them trying to Savage Smash us there. Does this work with no cards in hand? It does not. Okay. All right, and uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Wow, what a comeback, man. All we needed to do was draw lands. Whoo, that feels good. Man, our removal really pulled through there. Really pulled through there. And Ankle Biter, just, you know, just like, just hanging out there. Just ready to, ready to bite ankles. Oh yeah, I gotta restart. All right, two and one. I will keep this hand. We got Bristling Backwoods. So we have red, green, and black mana. With Patient Naturalist, Treasure Dredger, Cactarantula, Journey to Nowhere, so. Ideal, ideal hand here for us. I will play Patient Naturalist turn three instead of dredging treasure. Happy to trade my Treasure Dredger here for the Raucous Entertainer. This thing can get really out of hand. <laughs> I'm not actually sure if I wanted them to block or not, but here we are. Yeah, you can even, like, if you want to use a treasure right away, you basically turn any land, you take, you take a point of damage, and you turn any land into just a way to generate white mana. It looks like they're going to... Use a removal spell here. Botanical Sanctum, okay. We have a Cactarantula here we can play on turn 5. And then we also have uh, Lassoed by the Law. What on earth? Alright, let's, I mean, they're not going to just attack like this for no reason, right? So it's going to be like a Skullduggery or something along those lines. I do think it's in my best interest to... What do they have? I don't know. It's probably in my best interest to make a treasure, though. I don't think I want to use it on this, though.
Like, I don't know what they have. It's pro- like probably a removal spell. All right, well, they didn't do anything turn three, and they attack with a Rockus Entertainer. So I guess I'm not too mad about that. All right, they're, they're like a multicolor nonsense deck as well. You know, this turn, I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to block. Oh, you know what it could be? No, it's not that. I don't know what this is. It's like a Skullduggery or something. I just don't want to just take free damage. You know what I mean? So... What what are what are you working with, friend? So I'm gonna play the bristlebud farmer here, um, because I want to play around the counter spell. So let's do that. The counter target spell, unless you pay two mana or whatever. Phantom Interference, there you go. I have no idea what colors they are, but... All right. Assimilation Aegis on Bristlebud Farmer, sure. We do have Lassoed by the Law to kill this, by the way. Let's attack. The question is, do I want a Cactarantula instead? Or do I want the Bristlewood Bristle Farmer? Let's just play Cactarantula. They don't have the mana to kill it. And if they kill this, I get to draw a card. Don't care about that. Gold Pan. Okay. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So now it's a Bristlebutt Farmer. Sure. And then let's attack. <laughs> yeah. Too much value. And that is the really nice thing about the lasso, right? Like, you think, I mean, 90% of the time you kill a creature, but the other, whatever, 10% of the time you use it to get something else, it's awesome. So, really, really good for us there. All right, let's keep this going. Three and one with our sweet. Oh, we have all the colors. I am contractually obligated not to um, not to mulligan this. Like I just, I, it's just not. I cannot mulligan. It, it is an impossibility. Red, green for the three, three. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's raucous entertainer here, right? We just want to just keep getting value here if we can. Drover, grizzly, sure. Wow, what a nice little setup there. Huh. I kind of just want to find an untapped land. I'm not sure, though. This is kind of a beating of a... This is kind of a beating, just like a one-two punch here. This does block everything. All right, let's play the Vault Plunderer here. I'm not getting maximum value here, but I do like the fact that this draws us a card. Um, oh, throw from the saddle. Holy cow. Ouch. Stop it. 
Okay, let's play like this, activate, play this, and hope for the best. I am blocking. Oh, is this the mount card? Whatever. Okay, 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 okay. They're stalled on lands. Let's meteorite them. Let's kill this thing. Interesting. Do I just like chump with the raucous entertainer? They're stalled on lands. We'll see what they do. So this thing generates two mana? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have, this gives me eight mana. Yeah, I'm interested in creating another meteorite. So let's see. I'm just going to play one of these. Does it enter tapped? Oh, it enters tapped. Okay. All right. I am sufficiently happy. <laughs> uh, that was nice. All right. Sorry, Roxanne. It was a good run. You had a good run. Journey to nowhere. All right. What is this? Okay. So let's play a Cactarantula. Let's saddle it up. Saddle six. Um, attack. Holy cow. I'm scared. I'm killing this thing. They're at one. I have three attackers. All right. Win with a different rare. Roxanne, getting it done. Actually, they were kind of stalled on lands. Almost got ran over. Almost got ran over. But when you draw all the colors, it's pretty nice. All right, what are we, four and one? Okay. Ooh, it hands a little bit slow, but I'm going to keep it. Vault Plunder, Vault Plunder, and Free Strider Commando on the draw. I'm hoping that my opponent's not playing something super fast. Just any medium speed deck will do. Blue, I do like seeing that. And we drew a green-white land here, so now we can play all of our white removal spells. Oh, that's not a blue. Uh, these lands always get me every time. They get me every time. All right, so this is a lot more scary. Unless they attack me with the bandit. Wow. That was, that was it? All right. I think I can afford to plunder. Ooh, Badlands Revival, okay. So green, white, it looks like. I just don't understand why they all have a tinge. Like why they all look like they're more, like this looks like a red card and this looks like a blue card. You know what I mean? Cactarantula. 
All right. Ooh. I don't mind that. They get to draw a card, but I mean, it's a... I think it's worth it to kill a 6-5. Beatdowns. Let's see, what can we do next turn? We can Vault Plunderer as again. Free, stri uh, free Strider Commando, by the way, very nice with Badlands Revival, because you can make it enter the battlefield as a 5-5. We saw that in the draft yesterday. Maybe we'll do it again here. Buried in the guard. Oh, unlassoed by the law? Maybe it's just better to kill the Free Strider Commando. I'm not sure. I mean, they have a 6-5, but I have a 5-5. So it's not too bad. They definitely got value there, though. Now, if they use a Bite Spell or something on the Commando, then it's annoying. But we do have the Badlands Revival. Okay, so now they're going to sack the bandit to kill my commando. Sure. All right. That was definitely a good sequence of things for my opponent to do. It looks like they didn't want to mill themselves. Oh, I guess I can just do that instead. All right. I see your cactorantula and I play my cactorantula. They're going to saddle up, do some self-milling. Okay. Map the frontier. Not a big fan of that one. All right, so that's a 3-3, three, three, so I don't think it's attacking. We'll block. As we have uh, Badlands Revival. <laughs> I see. Um... Yep. All right. Let's uh, let's return the commando and put this into my hand. And the reason why is because this comes into play as a five five, right? And at this point, we have enough mana where I can just start hard casting this anyways. Miriam, sure. All right, we need to start th turning things around just a little bit. We have seven mana? Okay. What did they hit? Planes and Claim Jumper? Okay. So it's a 5-5. Five, five. It puts a counter on this? Interesting. This is the card I'm actually more scared of, so I'm going to block like this. Um, the reason being is the, the Stubborn Burrow Fiend kind of scales, where the, whereas the Cactarantula just kind of stays the same. You need to run out of gas here, though. All right? You good? You done? Nope, not done. Goodness gracious. Okay. <sighs> they are definitely not done. All right, so work. I mean, they top deck for the turn. This is definitely one of those like you hold your breath, you hope they don't have anything, and if they don't, then you can at least try to make a way to. Come on. What do you have? Ugh, gosh.
Maybe it's just that. Maybe that's it. All right. Ooh. I have two deserts. So if I get one, how many deserts do I have? I have three deserts in my deck, right? Okay, good. So, and they didn't have a combat trick. I'm just going to do it now and just hope they don't find something. All right. Man, Cactarantula is so good. Okay. We have Mystical Tether at instant speed, which is nice. All right, we can start getting in. Outlaw Medic, okay. I don't know if I care about that. Wow, we actually missed. Yeah, I do care about that. They get to draw a card too and trade with this. The reason being is now, like, they're at three life and they have to deal with three creatures. Did we get there? Did we get there? God, removal is so good. I love me some removal spells. That's not enough. That is not enough. All right, they're at negative one and they draw a card. Okay, no, that was a good game though. A lot of good back and forth. A lot of good back and forth. All right, where does that put us? We're five and one, five and one. Going for three trophies in a row, come on. All right, opponent on the play. I'll keep this. We have a journey to nowhere that's hard to cast, but we do have a treasure dredger and a patient naturalist and a desperate blood seeker, so uh, simply cannot mulligan this hand. We have a two drop and a three drop and a removal spell. Voracious Varmint. Hmm. I'll target myself. I'm happy enough with this trade. I do want this to die because I have Journey to Nowhere in my hand, right? Patient Naturalist. All right. They missed. They got a treasure. Okay. I see your patient naturalist with my own patient naturalist. Ooh, and I got a white desert. Very nice. I'm gonna save this beast bond outcaster and cast it after the tau. Tra <laughs> tau was gonna. I don't know what I was trying. I was like tactarantula, cact, cactarantula. Yeah, that's that's easy to say. That's easy to say. Goodness. I know there's some like weird raucous entertainer value nonsense that I could go for here. Spines with pout. No, no, I'm happy with this. Okay. All righty. So let's play ta -ta Tarantula. <laughs> and then play this, draw a card. And we'll pass. All right, so I got... Now, they did get to untap with a pair of five power creatures, so this is a little bit scary. Ay, ay, ay. Um... Okay, we'll block. 
Oh wow, they didn't have a trick. Timing tells, etc. Okay, that was good. I don't think the Congregation Griff is that big of a problem right now. Like, if they saddle, they have to tap two of their things and hit me for two. I have a Bristlebutt Farmer, which is pretty nice here. They have one card left. All right. Ooh, Mystical Tether. I can play this for Flash? Holy cow. Uh, let's get the Roxanne, although I don't have any red sources, but I just feel like that's what I need to do. All right. Oh, I have the tr uh, treasure dredger, of course. Okay. All right. That was a good turn. Good turn. We can play Roxanne. All right, they're dead. They just got flooded. They just got flooded. All right. Six and one. Winning in. Let's give it a go. Going for trophy. New metal to this. All right. We are on the play. Oh, yes. We have all of our colors. Turn two Burrow Fiend into turn three uh, Green Blade. Get the white source. Oh, yeah. This is everything that I want. And this even comes into play as a 2-3? Ooh, this is this is awesome. All right, voracious varmint, sure. Oh, that was the desert I was gonna get, but I guess I'll just get the other one. Dang, we missed. Um, let's play the patient naturalist. Is that that's a way to grow the stubborn fiend thing? Uh, I don't think it matters what colors we get, but let's do that. And then we we want the white source. And then let's saddle this up. Beat downs. Beat downs. Giant beaver. Okay. Let us do this again. See what we hit. Uh, just the 3 3, sadly. Let's attack. I'll trade with the beaver. That way I get to play the farmer. This is kind of a beating. <laughs> Hopefully we can uh, win this one. Ooh, they pass with a bunch of mana, but I do have bad land. And we got there. Woo! Dangerous curves ahead. Perfect mana. Four color deserts. First pick, Bristlebud Farmer. Hey, it worked for us last time, and it worked for us this time. This card was absolutely amazing. I mean, come on. L this card is just ridiculous. What are the chances of me getting this back-to-back, -back, by the way? This is not even a normal Mythic. This is a big score Mythic. And we first picked it in back-to-back -back drafts. I mean, 
Hey, look, I can't complain. I can't complain. It was in my deck. It was great. I loved it. All right, but let's kind of take a look at what else made this deck awesome. Well, our removal was top tier, right? Journey to Nowhere, Deserts Do with three deserts, Mystical Tether, Lassoed by the Law, Consuming Ashes. So we had really good answers to really big creatures, which when you play against a lot of these green decks, they're going to have great creatures. We had pretty good fixing. Despite the fact that we were four colors, we had... Uh, three Deserts, which helped, along with uh, a Treasure Dredger, which also helps us fix our mana, to go with uh, Outcaster Greenblade, which got us any color that we need, and also the one copy of Dance of the Tumbleweeds also made sure that we got the mana fixing that we need. So we didn't really run into that many mana issues. We had good removal. We had a solid curve, right? Look at all these twos. Not bad, not bad. Moving on, all of our three mana cards, just two for ones. Vault Plunderer, Patient Naturalist, Outcaster Greenblade. Free Strider Commando is just excellent, just as a curve filler and also something you can play later as a 5-5. And the Beast Bond Outcaster will also got us a lot of value with some of the big things that we had. Spineswood Paladin was, simp was okay, but Cactarantula is really the card that, for me, has kind of gone up in value just, uh, just because... It's not hard to just pick up a deck that has like three deserts, maybe four, um, especially in these multicolored decks. And if that's the case, I'm not saying this card isn't awesome, and it's certainly not something you need to take early, but I just feel like you're going to see one of these kind of late in the draft, and don't be afraid to take it. Don't look at this and be like, oh man, six mana. It's just like in a lot of instances, you can play this as a five mana, six, five reach. And reach is a really big deal in this format. There's a lot of these color combinations that's looking to fly over blue white for example is chock full of flyers and having a couple of creatures that have reach definitely goes a long way to help shore up those matchups so i've liked it um obviously you can still just kill it with any removal spell but the fact that it draws you a card means it's not so bad that being said i'm not looking to play a million cactarantulas in my deck but i'm okay having this be the top end of my mana curve and if you saw me draft in the past I never really prioritize the expensive cards because, like I said, they just come to you naturally. Spinewood Pal Spine Spinewood's Paladin, Cactarantula, Free Strider Commando, the Beaver in a Pinch. Like, you can just get those cards, so you just never have to take them early. It's really about the mana creatures, the ramp, uh, the, the throw from the saddle, Patient Naturalist. Those are the cards I'm looking to get at common instead of these expensive cards those will just you'll just kind of get naturally over the course of the draft but another black green deck now this one was very different right this was not a self mill um self mill black green deck like the last one was awesome because it was like a kind of like a combo deck mill 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 double badlands revival with the shepherd get a bunch of things back and get a bunch of value this way this was just a good four color deck and it's just very possible if you're base green. So I really like the fact that even in the last set, you can just draft the multicolored green deck and you can do it again. You can do it again because you have all of these deserts. Dance of the Tumbleweeds is one of the better variants of uh, three mana, go get a land. The fact that this gets you a desert is super nice. And the fact that in the late game, you can also cash this in for a creature means I don't mind playing a copy of this in my deck, especially if I have enough desert synergies or enough power to splash for. Roxanne was obviously great. Five mana for a 4-3 that kills something, and then it taps for two mana. I mean, this thing, if you untap, it's just incredible, right? You, 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 you tap your Meteorite for two mana, you deal two damage to something else. If it doesn't live, it doesn't matter. You still have another Meteorite in play. So Roxanne, definitely slam dunk card. And of course, I mean, I got, I got 14 wins off of this card. Can we do it one more time? We'll see. We'll figure that out possibly tomorrow. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you've enjoyed all of this content because I've been barraging you with these videos, sometimes even uh, uploading these two a day, uh, the best way to support me outside of, of course, watching these videos is through my Patreon. The Patreon channel, the link to the Patreon channel rather, is in the description below. Shout out to all the current patrons. Really do appreciate all of your support. Three trophies in a row. Can we make it four? We'll find out tomorrow. I'll catch you next time.